Well, hello there. Um, first things first, hope that you and all your loved ones are keeping well and safe in what people are calling the strangest of times. Um, the UK government just announced another three weeks of lockdown. And I guess I can consider myself fortunate insofar as the workshops um, attached to the house. I've got plenty of work to see me into the future and the workshop's fully stocked to enable me to do that. So you've got to count your blessings um, where you can, haven't you? So what I thought I'd do is show you the progress so far with the um, arch top mandolin. Well, you can see that the rim is now complete. Sides obviously have been bent, joined together by the, uh, the neck block from some Sitka spruce, helped, helped keep the weight down a little bit. You can see that I've routed in here um, really quite a massive mortise that will take the tenon that glues the, uh, the neck on. A um, piece of plywood for the towel block, as I always say, essential on the mandolin. You're going to be drilling holes in there. It's going to be under a lot of stress. Don't want it to fail. Um, and my double thickness solid maple linings, they really add rigidity to the whole rim, which I think helps volume and sustain. And at the end here, the first really little kind of <laughs> bit of finesse, if you like, finishing touch, the, um, the end graft there. And that's from some Macassar ebony with two fine maple lines either side of it. And that Macassar ebony will be used for the bindings and other um, aesthetic features, for want of a better term. We well, can see that the two book match pieces have been glued together for the back. So I now need to mark out the outline shape and then I can start carving it. Um, I'm really looking forward to that process because what I've been working on is my own um, round bottom plane. So I've made up this little fella and I'm really quite excited about seeing how he performs. So um, more on that one um, later. So we've also got the, uh, the neck blank here. Um, you can see that the head overlay is, has been glued on, been inlaid and there's a little bit of video coming up now, which shows you how I did that. So I've got a piece of mug with pearl here that's been stuck onto um, some very thin plywood for support. <coughs> and I'm going to do my head inlay. Um, I don't have a strict pattern that, I've, that I follow. I do the head inlay completely freehand. I kind of like to think of it as as my signature, and like you, like you you write your signature. Um, although it's the same every time, there are variations every time. So that's kind of what I like. I like the idea that each one of these is is unique, yet somehow <laughs> somehow the same. So I just concentrate on drawing it freehand until I get something that that I like and that I think resembles the other ones. I'm sure it's kind of morphed and changed over the years but I kind of like that idea too. And so after a few minutes <coughs> I've ended up with this and I've got no doubt that once I'm actually cutting it and filing it <laughs> Uh, that shape is going to hit, going, to, going to change again. But that's my starting point then for the logo. When you read all the books, it will show you that you hold the pearl vertically on a piece of sort of scrap wood with a, with a slot cut into it, and you work up and down like that. <clears throat> I must admit, I've always found it difficult to do that. I much prefer to put it into a vise and um, you use gravity, let, let, let gravity do the work and pull the saw down. Um, it's my preferred method. I won't say it's the correct method, but it's what I, I like to do. Very light saw. Once I've cut the outside shapes, I start doing these pieces. And then once I've sawn them, you need to file it. And I use needle files, but what I do, I don't know if you can see it, there's kind of bits of the needle file ground away and that allows me to get right into the corners. <clears throat> it 
So there's my inlay cut out of Mother of Pearl, still stuck onto the um, piece of plywood which offers it some support. Next step is for it to be inlaid into the head overlay and for that I've got this lovely piece of Macassar ebony. So that's going to be the head overlay and also out of this piece I will be able to get the, um, the finger rest, the pit guard, so that will all be in keeping. The head overlay is now prepared and as you can see it's some really nice Macassar ebony. Very pleased with that. Beautiful wood. So I'm just going to mark this out and then cut right the way through it, pierce through it, so that the mother of pearl inlay can um, be glued into the head overlay before that, that goes onto the um, head. We can see that I've drilled a series of holes to remove the bulk of the wood for the inlay and <coughs> I've got my Dremel here mounted upside down and what that will do that will allow me to remove a bit more of the of the wood and also of course I can see my design without the Dremel base getting in the way so that works really quite well. So that's the next step. So that's probably as much as I dare do <coughs> with, with the Dremel. The rest of it now, to get into any sharp corners and any fine tuning, I'll use um, a scalpel just to kind of whittle away. Well there we have it. One inlaid head overlay ready to be glued onto the head of the mandolin. Well that little fella there seems to take an inordinate amount of time for something which is purely aesthetic but my clients like it i like it so there we go we continue doing it um the rest of the neck is made from some really nice flame maple i don't know if you can see the figure as i turn that around in the light and as always you can see that i laminate my necks um, makes the neck much more stable and this time the middle core is from some sapili which obviously matches the um the back and the, and the sides, and there's a, um, a black line either side of that sapili, which um, echoes the, the, the dark bindings, head overlay, etc. You can see that I routed two slots here. They'll take the carbon fibre, which I use to, to, uh, to, to stiffen the neck. Um, I haven't put the carbon fibre in yet, because once the neck is glued um, into the body, I continue that slot right away into the, the, uh, the fingerboard extension and as always I will do or I have done um, a spliced head joint again something which I think is um, is a superior method and you can see that I've just marked out here where the volute is going to go so the next step is to shake the head drill the holes for the tuners which I think I've shown you in a, a previous video with one of the other arch tops. Well, I hope you found that um, informative and also maybe a welcome diversion from what's going on out there in the real world. <coughs> so you keep safe and healthy, please. And um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, I'm putting a lot more photographs about the construction of this on my blog. So have a look at that and you might see a bit more, more detail that I'm not covered in the video. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to uh, watch this and... Um, Good luck to you.